The Soviet Union was a machine built on fear. Its currency was silence. In the chilling silence of 1938, one man still talked. He argued. He laughed. His name, Lev Landau, a physicist of impossible genius, a mind that simply could not be contained. Landau revolutionized quantum mechanics. He solved problems that baffled the West. He was invaluable. But Landau was dangerous. He despised the dictatorship. He mocked the Politburo. He believed his brilliance was a shield. This is the story of two giants, the greatest dictator and the greatest physicist, a collision that should have ended with a bullet. The historian Joshua Rubinstein, an expert on Soviet dissidents, defines the confrontation. Landau's true enemy was not Stalin, but the Soviet lie. He demanded honesty in physics and in life. That honesty made him a political anomaly the regime could not tolerate. Landau was different. He didn't just reject Soviet ideology. He treated it with intellectual contempt. By 1937, he had already formulated the core of his famous theoretical minimum, a mandatory syllabus for every Soviet physicist. He believed talent, not party loyalty, was the only currency. In private, he laughed at the political slogans. In public, he refused to join the Communist Party. He publicly dismissed political hacks promoted in Soviet science as charlatans. He was arrogant, yes, but crucially, his arrogance was protected by his genius. His colleagues warned him. His mentor, Pyotr Kapitsa, insisted he adopt caution. But Landau saw the world in physics, logic, truth, and verifiable facts. He believed his mind was a fortress no political purge could breach. He lived by the rules of physics. The regime lived by the rules of paranoia. The collision was inevitable. The historian Gennady Gorelik, chronicling the suppression of Soviet science, defines Landau's fatal flaw. He was an anti-Stalinist who was too brilliant to fear. He confused his objective scientific authority with political immunity. In the Great Purge, that immunity was always temporary. Landau had arrived at the ultimate act of intellectual rebellion. In 1938, with the Soviet Union suffocating under the purges, Landau and his friend, Moisei Koretz, drafted a scorching manifesto. It was an anonymous pamphlet. Their goal, to expose the regime. The language was raw, unsparing. It directly attacked Stalin's regime, calling the dictator a fascist and the Soviet system a bloody fraud. It was a call for the people to rise up against the tyranny. This was not a scientific theory. It was overt treason. They planned to distribute the pamphlets on May Day, but the vast network of Stalin's surveillance was faster. The scholar Gennady Gorelik notes the predictable outcome of such defiance. It was political suicide written in prose. In that climate, the most dangerous thing you could own was the truth. The system always finds its way to the source. The place the Institute for Physical Problems in Moscow. The date, April the 28th, 1938. The Great Purge was at its bloody height. Landau was working late, safe, he thought, within his citadel of science. He was wrong. The NKVD arrived, quick, silent. They presented the arrest warrant, charge, German spy. The absurdity was monumental. The man whose work was vital to Soviet defense, accused of working for Hitler. Landau was dragged out, into the black cars. His protest was futile. Landau was now in Lubyanka, the NKVD's infamous interrogation prison. 
The charges were insane. German spy, saboteur, traitor. The truth was simpler. The NKVD wanted more than a confession. They wanted a recantation of physics. Landau's science, quantum theory, was Western. It was too complex for the party line. It was bourgeois. The state wanted a confession that discredited his work. It wanted proof that bourgeois physics was a tool of sabotage. They wanted him to implicate his mentor, the influential Nobel laureate Pyotr Kapitsa, to destroy the entire Soviet physics program with one forced signature. The historian Vladimir Zubok explains the political demand. In The Purge, the goal was not just to kill bodies, but to kill ideas. Landau's mind was their target. They wanted him to confess that truth itself was a lie. Landau was now official prey. His arrest was not some random NKVD quota. His file had traveled to the top. NKVD chief Lavrenti Beria personally sanctioned the action. Vyacheslav Molotov, the premier, approved the warrant. Landau was now a small, critical piece in a grand political game. His execution would be a clear victory for Lysenko's junk science. It would be a warning to every Western-educated scientist left in the USSR. His fate was sealed. He was just another victim of the system, except one man refused to accept the verdict. Landau had one ally left, his mentor, the brilliant physicist, Pyotr Kapitsa. Kapitsa was no fool. He had already survived the purges. He knew the risk was immediate execution, but he fought back. Kapitsa wrote a series of incredibly daring letters. They were not pleas for mercy. They were political demands. He wrote directly to Molotov. He wrote directly to Stalin. He risked his life for his colleague. His argument was simple. Landau is not a spy. Landau is essential. We must preserve Soviet science, Kapitsa argued. If you take Landau, you destroy the future. The historian Gennady Gorelik summarizes the audacity of this move. Kapitsa's letter was unique. It was the only time a scientist was known to openly challenge the NKVD's verdict to Stalin. It was the most dangerous legal appeal in Soviet history. Kapitsa's audacity was unprecedented. It landed directly on Stalin's desk. The dictator was cornered. His instinct was to kill. But the war with Hitler was approaching. Soviet science needed breakthroughs. Kapitsa's argument was strategic. Landau was a strategic asset. He was too valuable to be wasted. The NKVD had made a costly error. Stalin's decision was chilling. Not mercy, but a political calculation. He would release Landau, but the terms were absolute. The dictator gave Kapitsa a wager. Landau was Kapitsa's responsibility. If Landau committed any crime, Kapitsa would be destroyed. The terror system blinked, but it demanded a hostage. The historian Vladimir Zubok analyzes the reason for the pause. It was a rare victory for utility over ideology. Stalin needed the bomb. Landau's mind was essential for Soviet survival. The purge paused for national security and nothing else. In late April 1939, after nine months of detention and constant fear, Lev Landau was released. He was alive. But the man who returned from Lubyanka was not the same. The terror had worked. The arrogance was gone. The defiance was replaced by a crippling political caution. The system had broken his spirit. Landau never spoke openly against the regime again. He performed his genius in silence. His mind, once so loud, now operated under the constant shadow of the NKVD. Yet, the brilliance could not be suppressed. In the decades that followed, 
Landau continued his foundational work in physics, securing the Soviet Union's place in the nuclear age. His final, undeniable victory came in 1962. Lev Landau was awarded the Nobel Prize in physics. The prize was not just for his theory of superfluidity, it was a global validation that truth is not subject to political decrees. Stalin had tried to erase him, but the international language of science brought him back to life. The historian Vladimir Zubak summarizes the ultimate bittersweet lesson. Landau's survival was a miracle. It proved that objective utility can, in rare cases, offer a shield. But the scars were permanent. He won the Nobel Prize, but he lost his freedom of spirit. That was the ultimate dark cost of surviving the Great Purge.